In this video, we are going to understand what is aggregate demand. Since there are demands of a nation as well as an individual, therefore it is correct to say that demand can be viewed in both micro as well as macroeconomic aspect. Hence, I'll show you the contrast between both. In microeconomics, a demand curve looks like this. We have quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. A typical demand curve shows a downward slope from left to right. What this means is, when the price of a commodity or item is high, the demand for it is low. Because the consumer will think, why should I buy this product? I can buy other items with that money that would give me equal satisfaction. Then they buy a small unit of that commodity and spend rest of the money on something else. Similarly, at a low price, a consumer will think it's a great deal getting more quantity at cheaper price and they buy more units of that commodity. Now let's look at the macroeconomic aspect of demand. In macroeconomics, as we know, we are not dealing with an individual commodity. We are dealing with the economy as a whole. Therefore, the demand over here is called as aggregate demand, meaning total demand. Everything is going to be the same with a little difference here and there. On the x-axis, we have real GDP instead of quantity. Since GDP stands for gross domestic product, it is the total value of all goods and services produced over a specific time period. In other words, it is also called as the productivity of an economy. In microeconomics, we looked at one particular commodity or market. Here in macroeconomics, we are looking at total commodities that are produced in an economy. Now on the y-axis, we have price level. Again, the aggregate demand curve will be a downward slope from left to right. Now what this interprets is, when the general level of price in the economy is high, the demand for goods and services in the economy will be low. And if the demand is low, then the value of goods and services will fall. That will certainly bring down the GDP. Similarly, when the price level is low, there will be more demand for goods and services in the economy. And that will increase the GDP. Again, to re-emphasize the point, in microeconomics, we are looking at demand of an individual commodity or market. Hence, we just use the term demand. Whereas in macroeconomics, we are dealing with total demands of goods and services produced in an economy. And that's why we use the term aggregate demand. And if there is more demand for the Indian goods and services, then the GDP of our country will increase. Now we will see how to calculate aggregate demand. There are four major components of aggregate demand, and they are, the first one is consumption expenditure. It is the expenditure that you and I, as a consumer, spend behind our day-to-day -day consumptions. The second component is investments. So investments are goods that we as consumer purchase not for today, but for future to create wealth. The third component is government expenditure. When government expenditure increases, the aggregate demand in an economy increases. So you see, when government spends more, it is spending on national interest, which will create more jobs, development, upliftment, etc. So it's a sort of spending that influences demand in the economy. And the fourth component is net exports. Now, net exports is the difference between total exports and total imports. Alright then, once you have all these components, you need to arrange them in this formula. It is going to be AD is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So AD stands for aggregate demand, C stands for consumer expenditure, I stands for investments, G stands for government expenditure, and X and M stands for export and import. And if you see, all these components that form the aggregate demand are also the total value of goods and services produced in the economy. In much more simple terms, if I have to explain, think of it this way. In the economy, production takes place, and let's assume left side means total goods and services produced, and on the right side we will have the consumers who will consume these goods and services. Since we are dealing with demand, then we will have to do a calculation of right hand side, because demand always comes from the consumers and not from producers. So the formula that we saw moments back is based on right hand side. Just to quickly summarize, if the price level increases, the aggregate demand in the economy decreases, meaning aggregate demand is inversely proportioned to price. I hope this topic was not that confusing and hopefully you have now understood what aggregate demand is. If you want to see more of such educational content, make sure you're subscribed. By doing so, you'll get an alert when my next video comes. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.